Welcome, Goose. It's good to see you again. We've been we've been talking quite a bit about digital customer experience as if it's a software or application level discussion. But what about the infrastructure requirements of digital customer experience? To me, uh, building resilient applications and, and, and platforms is a journey that starts really early in the software development lifecycle. And yes, on the application development side, right, in, in designing how your application works, the software side of, the, of things, absolutely, there's a, there's a critical role there and, and one that I think is really exciting. And in fact, before that, the business requirements. But to your question about what do you then do on the infrastructure side, you know, we, we like to say data has gravity. There is, a, there, is, there is a tendency to assume that we can abstract out our infrastructure. And that works well for small or medium-sized applications. But for very large applications, that, is, um, uh, that, 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 that would be problematic. And you'll run into trouble if you assume that geography no longer exists. Right? If you are de designing systems that run in multiple countries, um, data centers many thousands of miles apart from each other, you you're going to have to deal with fairly high latency. Um, and, and really, you know, those are driven, obviously, by distance, by the speed of light, and, and the fact that networks can only get you your data so fast. Not only that, so there's the latency component, which I think people will understand, but there's also the resiliency component. A design pattern that you often see is designed for failure. Isolate your problems to certain domains. There is almost no better concept than, than, than a fault domain than a data center. If you can, um, it, it tends to be somewhat easier to decide between routing between multiple data centers. It's a very natural barrier. So you have data center A, B, C, D, E. Well, we're, we're taking data center C down for maintenance or because there's an issue. So the concept of fault domains is something that is th therefore by, na by nature driven by your infrastructure. It's a physical data center that you're temporarily not using or using less of. And so it, it, it goes to show that those fault domains and those resiliency decisions, yes, they start with your application design, but your, but your, your infrastructure needs to be very much part of that. And how does cloud play into all of this? As you begin to migrate those data centers to the cloud, how do you still take into consideration th the speed of light and fiber and latency concerns in a cloud environment? So the cool thing is most folks who are engineering for the clouds are really starting to become aware of those, those considerations. When you do a reach back to a data center, many, many engineers will immediately think, oh, that, that's, that's a big, a big thing. We have to be careful. We have to be mindful about that, which is the exact right, same right approach. Um, so, so, and that brings me to that bigger theme of, of culture. Building resiliency and, 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 and reliability into your applications requires work for, from, from, your, from your business partners, from your application partners, from your infrastructure partners, from everybody in the organization to come together. And, and so making these decisions is not something that should happen by a small group in a design committee. That, that should be, uh, you, you should build your culture. You should work on, on getting everyone involved in those decisions and, and, and providing feedback cycles. So that if there is a project or a team that says, you know, I'd really like to try something in the cloud, that from day one, they, they have in mind, or maybe, maybe we should not do a reach back or do only one reach back or, or whatever whatever sort of, so they can start those conversations early on about how do we interact between my cloud, my cloud, you know, availability zones, my cloud domain into data center, A, B, C, D, or E. And, and um, it, it, a big part of what I've learned over the years is, is getting that culture ready, is getting everyone to understand how small things can contribute to a significant increase in, resi in resiliency. Um, so, so that's, uh, that's a big part of, uh, I think, what, what it takes to build, get con uh, organizations to the next level is spread the knowledge, teach folks about, you know, we made this one little tweak here and it prevented, you know, the impact there when so-and-so happened. And those feedback cycles are really interesting. Like, how do you get that communication, that, that information out to, to, the, to the wider org? That's a very interesting observation that culture has a very practical implication when it comes to 
integrating the development of digital customer experience applications with the recognition of the constraints that the infrastructure provides. And it's interesting to me that you're putting that, that bridge is actually culture because what you want to do is make sure that the infrastructure folks are fully versed on what the application developers are looking to do and then the application developers understand to an appropriate level the constraints of the infrastructure. So thank you for that, that was very insightful. 100%, and there's one more aspect that, that I briefly touched on. It, it even starts earlier in your life cycle. If you, if you have these conversations about resiliency, th those need to happen at the very forefront, if, at the beginning of your projects, of your initiatives, of your changes. And so it can be a conversation if, you, if, you're, if, you're, if you're in the door early enough to say, we're designing a widget or a screen or, or an application with, with five components. And you know, these three are really important, but these two maybe are less important. And if you can get sort of those classifications out, which is not a common way of looking at the world. Like many times you, you think oh, all five are equally important, but, but, but maybe if you ask a question a little harder and deeper, maybe these three, you know, without them, the page won't work. But these two, you know, we really want them to be there. And in 99% of the cases, they should be there. But, but if they're not there, perhaps we can display the page with just these three. And, and th if you can get those conversations earlier in your project, there are a couple of things that can happen. Y you, can, you can focus your, 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 your energy and your love and your, your, your time on those big three, first and foremost. And second, you can decide to run these uh, these, these more and less important components through different pieces of infrastructure. M maybe they're equally sized or equal, but, but you, you, you understand that we never want the, the, the less important ones to touch the more important ones. So a failure or an, 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 a load issue in, in the less important ones should never have a negative impact to the, to the more important ones. Those discussions obviously are are are, are important to have early on. You, you, it's, it's really hard to build that in retroactively. Um, and so when it, when it comes to culture, it's not just within your engineering organization. It is also making sure your, your product partners are at least aware of, of sort of the trade-offs that can be, can be made there. And that will help um, smoothen the way for these conversations. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll design these to be high, high availability and these also high availability, but definitely use different channels. You, you, you shortcut many, many, many uh, meetings and conversations because everyone's aware of like sort of what we're trying to achieve. Um, so, so that's part of that culture is, is your whole organization. So it's not just the culture, but it's also using that culture of sharing at the very beginning of the development cycle to ensure that features are appropriately prioritized so that you can design for them. Because I can see how, how yes, you have to push an application owner to say, what are the most important things that have to happen and mm -hmm. what are the things that are nice to have but could fail if it had to. So that's very insightful. Thank you very much.